How you doing YouTube? Back with another Infinite Flight video. Um, in a Grand Caravan. Uh, we'll be starting out here at FDR Airport in the Caribbean. Uh, the purpose of this video, I want to show you how to prepare for uh, flying uh, traffic patterns. Um, and one of the first things I do, I set up my airplane. So let's say um, I'll set up my um, my speed that I'm going to be flying, my top speed. I'll set up my um, altitude that I'm going to be flying and my rate of climb, which for this plane, I'll try to keep it at uh, 700. I'll set up an initial trim and flaps I will set to 20. Uh, then I'll come in and on the map view, I'm just going to open this up and just a little bit and center it. And here, make sure my landing light, strobe lights are on. Of course, when I'm flying online, um, I have to turn those on. But right now, I'm in the solo mode. And the purpose of that is because before you go online to fly traffic patterns, you need to go to the airport in solo mode that you're going to be flying at and find out what the um, headings are for the pattern for and you need to do this um uh on that run strip you need to get on the runway and do it so it's best to be inside the cockpit so that the heading bug you see it's all lit up in green is showing 64 right now um so you write that down the heading of the runway you're on and then the next thing you want to do take the autopilot off take the brakes off and then turn the plane completely around. Just whip it right on around. So that it's facing in the opposite direction. And then just get it centered. If you need to jump out, just make sure the plane's moving slow. Here it's easy. We can use these center center stripes to get one wheel on one side and the other wheel. Do the best you can. We are not perfect, but we're going to try to get close. And then once you get start to get centered, just hop back in. And it there you go. We're centered. There you go. This is the reciprocal. It's 244. Okay, and then you want to face the plane to the left and make sure you write down these headings, okay? Jump out. Once it starts getting a little close, slow the plane down. It's all right if it goes off the runway because we're not online. We're not going to get dinged or anything like that. Let's see what it says. We're close. Let's turn it a little more. There we go. And that should be about level. And it, it looks level. So the next thing we do, we write that down. Okay? Um, so if we were flying out on 60 and we make a right turn, we'd be turning right to 154. If we were flying out on runway 26, we'd make a left turn to 154. Um, so now we flip the plane completely around. We do another 180. Doesn't matter which way you turn, so we'll take a right turn. Turn the plane completely around and take it to the other edge of the runway. Let me go up. I'm going to roll up first because I need that flat edge as a guide. And make sure you write these headings down again. Can't stress that enough. Slow the plane down. Jump out. Uh-oh, we're getting close. That looks about right. Get into the cockpit. All right, so we got a 336. 
So if we were flying out on 6, we'd make a left turn to 336. Even if you made that left turn to 340, I think you'd be close. And if we were flying out on uh, runway, I think that's 24, we'd make a right turn to um, uh, 336. So now we have all, our, all of our headings. If we fly out on 24, the reciprocal for the downwind leg is the heading of the runway in the opposite direction and vice versa for runway six. So now you're prepared. You're ready to fly those traffic patterns. So what's left for you to do? The other thing I, I, I would suggest is that if you're going to be flying uh, traffic patterns to get your landings up, uh, that you need to main to to get the uh, to maintain your um your uh, ranking is that you use one of two um uh, planes. The two planes I suggest are the SR twenty two and the Cessna two hundred eight. So let's start with the SR twenty two. Uh, what you want to do is in the Google search engine is type Cirrus SR22 takeoff speed. Once you've done that, you want to scroll up until you find this at the top, www.inetefb.com. You want to click that link, and this is the PDF file you need. It's going to give you everything you need about all the different types of takeoffs that you could encounter that are pertinent to infinite flight and that's ironic because this is real world stuff right here and it's also going to give you traffic pattern information as a bonus okay and then it's going to give you your landing speed information you need to study all of this and learn it i'm not this this video is not about what agl stands for or what kiis stands for it's not even about what um, VR stands for. Those are separate things. I talk about these things in another video, um, but you need to learn um, aviation uh, t uh, terminology, okay? Next, the Cessna 208. I don't mean to be rushing. If I am rushing, I apologize. You can always refer back to the video, but I don't want the video to get too long. You want to type in Cessna 208 takeoff speed. You type in, you hit the first one. Let me show you that again. It's atlasaviation.com. Type that. Tap it, I should say. In the Cessna Grand Caravan um, V-Speed uh, 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 recommendations are going to come up with the flap recommendations, okay? You're going to have your takeoff speeds based on weight and your landing speeds based on weight. What more could you ask for? You don't need the checklist information. That's for real real world pilots and for other pilots that may be doing high level simulation. You need this first page right here and you need to study it. Um, again, you need to know what the V speeds are because you can actually start noticing these things happening in infinite flight. Infinite flight is extremely realistic. Um, the stall speeds work, try it you'll crash. Um, so the one thing I want to share with you, the reason why I suggest that you use the SR-22 and the Cessna 208 when you're doing your online traffic patterns, to, and this is for people who are trying to get their landings up. I'm going to show you my stats um, for, for a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, let's go online. And the reason I, I suggest those two planes is because of the slow speed and that you can, can keep them in close proximity to the runway you're going to be flying or the airport you're going to be flying at so that you can take off and land once every six to seven minutes. Some, and if you're really good, you can take off and land once every five minutes. Okay, so I'm going to show you my stats here and... Basically, I have one more landing. See here, it says landings 90 days, 200. I'm trying to get that down. So I need 30 more landings, and then all of these requirements will be turned white. Once I've done that, I want to go ahead and start working on becoming a level 
uh, for pilot. And again, even after I get those 200 landings, I need 50 more landings. And after I get to level four, I'm going to need another, what is that? 500 landings? My goodness. Uh, that's a lot. And the easiest way to do it is to fly traffic patterns over and over and over again. Okay. Um, and then every once in a while, you can just do a long flight to complement that to get extra XP, um, the experience points. So that's what I have for you. Uh, I hope the last two videos that I, I'm posting about traffic patterns help you and getting your landings up. Seeing such a huge number of landings for some people can be a lot, especially those of us who do mobile flight simulation as a hobby but don't have a lot of free time. So um, please subscribe to my channel and I thank you for the support I've been given uh, thus far and uh, leave a comment and if you have any questions don't hesitate to ask. Thank you.